Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly happy, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone telegraphing rapping, rapping at the chamber door. Tis the visitor, I muttered, tapping at the chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was him on bleak December when he tempered not, he never brought his ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished him all vain, we would love to borrow from my book, sir, she's of sorrows, far off by the lost lay over far that rare and radiant babe, whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here for evermore. And silk and sand uncertain, rustling up each purple curtain, thrill me, fill me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood with fear. Tis some visitor in trading enters at my chamber door, some late visitor in trading enters at my chamber door. This it is and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly good, forgiveness I implore, but the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you did rapping, and so faintly you came tapping. But I scarce was sure I heard you here. I opened wide the door to hide stay. Nothing more. Deep into the darkness, peering long, I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams, no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word Lenore, merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, while my soul then was burning, soon again I heard the tapping, uh, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what there at is in this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment in this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flutter and flutter in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least old. Basins, matey, not a minute stopped or steady, but with me and Lord Lady perched above my chamber door, perched up on the bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling all my soul, my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim, an ancient raven wandering through the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly foul to hear discourse so plainly to which I can say little meaning, little relevancy for, for we cannot help agree that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such a name as nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on that placid bust spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour, nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered other friends had flown before. On the morrow he would leave me as my hopes had flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled by the steel on his broken, I reply, so happily spoken. Doubtless said I wanted others, is its only stock in store, caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed fast, till his song was one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope a melancholy burden bore, never, never more. But the raven still beguiling my eyes, I fancy into smiling, straight I went to the cushion seat where the bird and bust endure. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to thinking, fancy into fancy thinking, what's this ominous bird of yore, what's this grim and gainly ghastly gaunt ominous bird of yore, met him croaking nevermore. This I sat, engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining. That the lamp light gloated o'er, but whose velvet light outlining with the lamp light gloating o'er, she shall pray, ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by a seraphim, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee by these angels, he hath sent thee by thee. Respite, respite, and nepenthe, from thy memories of Lenore, quaff, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet, still of murder, devil, whether tempter, sin, or tempest, toss thee here ashore, desolate, yet all unplanted, down this desert land, enchanted on this home by horror, haunted, tell me, tell me, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead, tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. 
Prophets and I, thing of evil, prophets kill it, but our devil. By the heaven that bends above us, by the God we both adore. Down the soul of sorrow laden, if within that distant Aiden it shall clasp that sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp that rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked out of starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of the lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart. And take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven nevermore. Then the raven never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pal bust of palace just above his uh, just above my chamber door. And his eyes follow the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. And the lamplight on him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. Brought to you by Zero Theology.